So we were praising the Lord. And before we will praising and thanking the Lord again, we'll just go through a part of the scripture. Uh, Hebrews 10 verse 24 and 25. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see, the day is approaching. So, we know as the century is passed, the first century culture has gone away, and the tradition has taken away. In first century, they were coming together for these purposes. Now, in Sunday, use, people used to tell we are going for Sunday worship. It is not wrong if you are rightly understanding the word because as you are worshipping 24 hours, 365 days, then we are coming together also, we are worshipping, it is true. But if our worship is restricted to Sunday only, it is totally away from the scripture. That is not the message we are receiving from the Bible. Because in Romans 12, 1, we are seeing, no need to take, we are to give ourselves as a living sacrifice. So, as long as you are living, you are worshipping the Lord. So, in that, if you are understanding that true, it is true we are coming together to worship. Otherwise, it is specifically written, what is the purpose of coming together? Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. So the purpose of assembling together is written, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the, so much the more as you see the day is approaching. So the purpose of coming together is, no need to mention we are coming together to worship because we are continuously doing it. So what, what is specific of coming together is 24, stir up love and good works and exhorting one another. Three things are expected when you are coming together. Again, I am repeating because the tradition has already conquered. The traditionally people used to tell we are going for worship on Sunday. That is not wrong, provided if you understand what is true worship is. True worship is your life. We, we are continuously thinking about that topic. The true worshippers are worshipping God in truth and spirit. The worshipping God in truth and spirit is nothing but the first commandment. Love your God with all your heart and all your strength and all your might according to what is written, according to truth. So, it's a life. Our life is the worship. And life, our committed life is the worship to the Lord. But let us think this thing, these three things. It is to love each other. So we are loving each other, but the early Christians, they were meeting together every day and they were uh, breaking bread every day and all. But if you are truly loving each other, one day is uh, too much a lo uh, long period of time to meet, meet together because you have a deep desire to see again. So Sunday we are meeting. So again, after seven, seven days only we can meet each other means it's painful if you are truly loving. So the purpose of meeting together again next Sunday or in between, so only as frequently as possible we have to meet together, it is to express our love. So it is to, so only here it is written, but some people who are not loving to that extent, they do not mind abstaining from some. So only it is written as the practice of some, you should not practice it. That is what, what is written 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some. So in first century also, some people were not so enthusiastic in meeting together, not to worship, but to meet together to love. So they were meeting together to love and good works. So when we are coming together, then only some one, of, one person may be in need of some help. The other person may be able to do discharge that help or able to help in any aspect, maybe physical, maybe spiritual, maybe financial. So when we are coming together, then only you will come to know about the need. So it is first of all, the first priority is to love each other. So everybody knows 
if we are able to, if we are getting an opportunity to meet the loud ones, we, will, we all will be rejoicing and happy to meet. Then I heard about the uh, people, husbands and working, husband is in Gulf and wife is in the mainland or in India. The wife is waiting so anxiously to meet her husband. Same way, we are all anxiously waiting to meet our spiritual husband, that is our Lord. So, if you are loving the Lord, you will love his children. Because one who is joined with the Lord is one with the Lord. So, one who is in the Lord is same as the Lord. So, it is, so first of all, we should remember what for we are coming to them. It is to love each other. Secondly, it is to do good works. Then third, exhorting one another. So, how far we are discharging that responsibility, it is our duty to think. When you are meeting together what and we should know it is written what we are to exhort why we are to exhort in regard with what we are to exhort that is written 25 the last word so much the more as you see the day is approaching see one thing I can guarantee everybody the Lord will come to your life within 50 or 60 years I can guarantee so you have to face the Lord it's an accurate prophecy Within 50 or 60 years, you have to meet the Lord. So as the, lady, as the day is approaching, it is our duty to prepare each other to face, to meet the Lord. If I, again, if you're going to Hebrews 3 verse 13. So many times the purpose of meeting together people used to forget. It is to encourage each other. Everybody is having a responsibility when we are coming together. You cannot say like, I am. am I the keeper of my brother? We are all keepers of brother. We are to encourage each other. Then Hebrews 3 verse 13, it is written, but exhort one another daily. That is the New Testament message, but we are not meeting every day. At least once in seven days we are meeting. Exhort one another daily while it is called today. That means today we are alive. Tomorrow we don't know whether we will be alive or the Lord will come in the midnight. We do not know anything about tomorrow, whether we will be alive or not. Lord only knows, we do not know. So, as long as today is there, you have to exhort one, one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So, it is our duty to protect our fellow brother or sister from the deceitfulness of sin. So sin is deceitful because the author and the fabricator of sin is Satan. One of the names of Satan is deceiver. So we will be deceived by the deceitfulness of sin. What is the deceitfulness of sin? If you are going to Hebrews 10 verse 25. No, 11. Hebrews 11 verse. 24 onwards, if you are reading, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. So all the sin, it is having pleasure, but we have to remember that that pleasure is passing. The passing pleasures of sin, Moses forsake, and he preferred to suffer for the sake of Christ. So, what is our attitude as the day is fastly approaching in our life? Moses forsake the passing pleasures of sin and choose to suffer for the sake of the Lord, for the sake of Christ, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the riches of the treasures of treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. We also should look to the reward. What is awaiting us when we are meeting the Lord? We are reading in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. No need to take. We, we have to give an account of our life in front of the Lord to receive the reward of what we have done in this life when while we are in this body. So here, so if you are forsaking the passing pleasures of sin. So what is written in Hebrews 3? As long as today is there, 
exhort one another to save or protect our fellow brother or sister from the deceitfulness of the passing pleasures of sin. Because everybody will be trapped or uh, attracted towards the pleasures of sin. Otherwise, nobody will do sin. If sin is a painful thing, nobody will do sin. So pain, sin gives some sort of comfort. So when you are telling a lie, you are getting some relief. You are escaping from a particular situation. Or somebody is getting angry towards you. Then you are when you are retorting, or when you are expressing your angry back, or when you are expressing your furious behavior back, you are getting some relief. People used to tell when I am telling this thing, after telling these things, I got some comfort. So all these sins, they are having a passing pressure. So it is our duty to encourage each other, to protect others, or to, to encourage others to escape from the passing pressures of sin. Again, if you are going to First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. First Thessalonians 5 verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing the Thessalonic Thessalonians those church members they are doing it so Paul is encouraging them to continue what they are what they are doing so therefore comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing so are we like the Thessalonian believers are we doing comforting each other or edifying each other so this is what is written in the scripture. Lord spoke with me, spoke to me last week. He told these things to me. So he edified me. So I made a decision to live for the Lord according to the scripture. So what, what for we are coming to that? You have to think because many people, sometimes they are coming to that without knowing the purpose of coming to that. So we have to know we are coming to that to love each other first of all, because love is the all law. So in First Timothy 1 verse 5 we are reading the purpose of all our commandments, the purpose of all Bible study, fasting, prayer, studying the scripture, everything. In First Timothy 1 verse 5 we are reading. Now the purpose of the commandment, purpose of the commandment from Genesis to Revelation or the fulfillment of the law is to love. The purpose of all the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from a sincere faith. So we are coming together to make our conscience good and to develop our faith, sincere faith, and to develop a pure heart. If we are developing all these things, then the, the God-expected love will come, come forth from our life. So the purpose of all the commandments is to love each other because love is the fulfillment of the law. If, if you are going to Second Peter chapter 1, how you are to grow in Christian life when it is written, First, first Peter chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2 verse 2, see, 5 onwards. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, giving all diligence means all attraction. You have to concentrate only on this topic. That is what is called. Give all diligence, all attention, everything. Give all diligence at your faith. So starting from faith, we know we are all saved by faith because of the grace of the Lord. So we have started our life in faith, no doubt. You are saved by, you are saved by faith alone and by grace alone. All diligence, art your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge. So faith, if it is not according to scripture or if it is not according to knowledge, it's a worthless faith. So art your faith, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control. So knowledge may be there, but no self-control is there because if you have the knowledge of the Lord, definitely you have the self-control. So we have to struggle hard to add self-control to 
knowledge. Then, to self-control, perseverance, perseverance. Perseverance means at one stage you may be having good self-control, maybe for 10 days. The 11th day, if you are failing, you do not have the perseverance. So, to self-control, you should have perseverance. Means you have to continue. It's of no use if you are continuing in good Christian virtues for 10 years or 20 years. You have to continue in it till your last breath. So the Hebrew eleven we are seeing all the heroes of faith, they died in faith. So to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. Godliness means it is a life according to scripture. Again, everything is related to scripture. To perseverance, godliness. So you are continuing in faith, knowledge, everything. But if your life is not according to scripture, there is no godliness. Godliness is a life according to scripture. So to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. So you are godly. You have good faith and everything. But no kindness in the life. Jesus many times when he is seeing the multitude, he felt with the compassion, mercy. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. So starting from faith, it should end up in love. So we have, we have all started in faith, no doubt. And we all have love, but in different extent. So we have to struggle hard to cultivate love which is according to scripture and the quality of love the christian love is written in first corinthians 13. so there are different types of love in the world there's love between lovers love between parents and children it's different types of love in the world but the god expected love the quality of that love is written first for in a few words i read not full we have to know Hebrews, no, First Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have no love, I have become sounding brass or a clang, clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to the to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love then the so we have to know whatever whatever may be the Christian virtues we are having. You may have faith to move the mountains, or you are selling everything to give the poor. Everything you know, without love, you can do all these things. So without love. Whatever you are doing is nothing. Then verse 4 onwards, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. Rejoices in the truth. Truth is the word of God. So, if you are not rejoicing in the scripture, word of God, it's not the divine love what we have inside. Because love rejoices in the truth. Solely, in Second Thessalonians we are reading, since they did not love the truth, God has forsaken them or given them over to strong delusion so that they started believing lie. So, if you are not loving and believing the truth, God will forsake us. He will give us power to wrong belief and all wrong doctrines and all. So we are to um, rejoicing in the truth, bears all things, believe all things. Believe all things means believe all the scripture. Not that everybody is telling you something and you are not believing. No, it's love is with the discernment. So believing all things means all the truth you are believing. Your faith is based upon the truth. Believing all things. Love, this is what I want to tell you. Love never fails. Love, must, love never fails because that is the fulfillment of the law. So we are coming together to love each other. Then love is of 
specific qualities, not the love what we are seeing in the world. This love, it will not quarrel. It will not parade itself. That means if you are having the true love, you will not talk about yourself. You will not talk about yourself, whereas you will talk about the Lord and Lord's kingdom. If you are talking about yourself and your achievements in the world, it's not the love. It's not the love which Lord is expecting to cultivate in your life. It's not puffed up, no proud, and does not behave rudely. See, some people are known for their rude behavior, getting angry, speaking in an unlo unloving way, and destroying the peace of everything. In If the husband or wife, if they are speaking rudely, the peace will be taken away from that house. No peace. If you are speaking rudely, no peace. And if you are, why you are speaking rudely, it is because you do not have the divine love. If you have the divine love, you will tolerate everything. That is what is written. Uh, love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. See, Lord told us it is better to give than to receive. If you do, if you if you are having the divine love, when you are meeting somebody, you are thinking of what I can give to that person rather than what I will get. When you are coming to church also, you have to think what I can give rather than what I will get. If you are thinking like that, it's because you do not have the divine love. So it is does not behave rudely, does not seek its own. Because in the last days, what is written in Second Timothy, the, la the quality of Christians in the last days. It is not about the people of the world. It is written about the quality of Christians in the last days. Second Timothy 3, no need to read full, verse 4, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Lovers of pleasure means we are loving ourselves, our own comfort, our own benefit, our own things we are thinking rather than thinking about God and his kingdom. So this love, if you have the divine love, it will never seek your own, its own. And again, it's not provoked. If you're getting provoked by somebody, keep it in mind, you do not have the divine love. The love, what we are having is some other love. The love of the world, it's not a love which is cultivated by the Holy Spirit. So think about that. Think about our own life. If you are getting provocated by the behavior of anybody, maybe your wife or children, whomsoever it is, if you are getting provocated, you have to repent. You have to understand that your heart is not rightly changed. You are not grown up to the expectation of the Lord. So the divine love, it will never get provocated. Um, it's not prov provoked. Things no evil. You have to think only the good things of others. You are not a fault finder. You are thinking only the good things of others because your eyes are so tuned to see the good things. You see, in when we were young, the children play like keeping a spectacles on the face and different colored papers they will keep on the covered the glass with the different color papers. If you are covering it with a blue paper, you will see everything in blue color. If you are covering it with the red paper, it everything in red color. Same way, if your heart is tuned to see the only the good things then you cannot think the bad things of others because when you are seeing when you are finding fault in others it is not because others are fault it is because your heart is not converted it is the same evil heart it's nothing happened you might have taken baptism because you are immersed and coming out of it happened inside but we are seeing the bad of others or seeing the good of others if you are going to Titus chapter 2, verse 3, it's very interesting. Titus chapter 2, verse 3, if you are reading, the translators made a mistake. Titus 2, verse 3, if you are reading, I will read. Um, regarding the older woman, the older woman, likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderers. Do you know what is the word translated as slanderer? No, that's Malayal. Now, which Greek word is translated as slanderer? Everybody should know. 
Satan, demon. If you are a slanderer, you are an agent of Satan. The same way you can check it because now we we have a lot of study aids. You check it, Titus two verse three, slanderer the same word as Satan. So when you are slander, you are doing the work of Satan. So you are showing the character of your master. So you counter check it. So you should not be slanderous means you should not be an agent of Satan when you are slandering, when you are finding fault in others, because it is written in Revelation 12. He is a perpetual accuser. He is a perpetual accuser. His eyes are so tuned to find only the fault. Are you an agent of Jesus or an agent of Satan? Say, Jesus is a comforter. Holy Spirit is a comforter. He encourages. So in our life, we have to see whether we have the divine love, divine love or the satanic love. Satan also appear like an angel of light, showing that he is a, a good angel. So the, the evil angel or the Satan, he is always accuser. Uh, so if you are doing his work, he will be happy. If you are going to Revelation 12, Revelation 12 words. Uh, if you are reading 12 words, Ten. 10 onwards, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the our brethren. Accuse them, or night has been cast down. It is our duty to think whether this accuser is cast down from our life. If you are an accuser, you will get destroyed yourself and your family will be get destroyed, your children will be destroyed. Because if you are an agent of Satan and working in this world, if you are a missionary for Satan, nothing good will do. He has come to your life to destroy you. So he is a perpetual accuser. Uh, it is written for the accuser of our brethren. So we are all brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ. See, it is our duty to hide the shortcomings of others. It is not to propagate. It is our duty to hide. See, you go back to the Genesis, no need to take. After the flood, the Noah, Noah was drinking and he became, lost his all senses. He, he lied down as naked. So the harm, he called the other brothers and showed how our dad is behaving. But the other two, Coward. they walked backward, covering the shortcoming of their dad. Are we followers of harm or the other brethren, uh, other two brothers? They want to hide the shortcoming of their dad rather than exposing to the others. If you are trying to expose the shortcomings of others, you are a descendant of harm. What is awaiting you? Yes. Not only really harm. The generation of Ham was cursed. Ham, it is written, it is interesting. It is not that Ham is cursed. It is written. Canon, no, Canon is, is go to Genesis 9. So when you are accusing or doing the work of Satan, you are destroying not only yourself, but your children, children's children. Uh, Genesis chapter 9. You read? 22. Yes. 9 verse 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Curse be Canaan, not harm. Curse be Canaan is the son of harm. Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants. He shall be to his brethren. 
So do you want to bring cults to your children, children's children and generations? You see Canaanites, they were in the land of Canaan and the, the descendants of both Sheth and uh, Japheth, they conquered it. The Canaanites were executed and killed. That curse was still there on Canaanites, so they were indulging in sin and God cursed them. So are we people who are hiding the shortcomings of others or exposing? So harm exposed the shortcomings, did the work of Satan, but two sons, they were, though their father was having shortcomings, they covered it. So we are all brothers. If you are exposing the shortcomings of our brethren, let us stop doing the work of Satan and do the work of Jesus. So we are coming to the primarily to love each other and do good works. See, it's not only financial aid or physical aid. You see, your good works, you can encourage others spiritually. Some, some may be poor, poor spiritually, just came to the Lord and uh, did not get opportunity to grow according to the expectation of the Lord, or they may be lethargic in things of the Lord. You can encourage, you can do good works in that way. And thirdly, encourage. What you are encouraging, you are telling, the day is coming. Romans 13, verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. And do this. And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. It is high time for each and every one of us to come out of sleep. And now. Uh, and now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Now my salvation is far nearer than at least. Now I am 30. Now I am nearer than when I first believed. And each and everyone is fastly approaching the day. So we have to encourage and we have to wait impatiently for the return of the Lord. He is written again one more word I will read in the last the return of the Lord. He, the same Hebrews 9 verse 27. To whom he is coming back, we should know. Hebrews 9 verse 27. And as, as it is appointed for men to die once, nobody can escape. It is appointed for man to die once, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time. See, his second coming is for those who are eagerly, eagerly waiting for. It is not that I, I want to live till 90 years old, then I am not able to walk or I am not able to enjoy anything of the world, then I want the Lord to come back. No. Now is the time. If you are not desiring his return now, you will never going to desire his return in your life. If you are not loving the Lord now, you are not going to um, grow in the love because love is love must be absolute there can be shortcomings in our life but our love towards the lord must be quality qualitatively it must be absolute not quantitatively quantity may improve but qualitatively our love must be absolute otherwise lord will not accept us that is the first commandment so he is coming back to receive those who are eagerly waiting for him one more word first thessalonians 1 verse 9 and 10 One verse 9, one verse we are reading for writing about the Thessalonian believers. They themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and how you give attention to this word, how you turn to God, to and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus who delivered us from the wrath to come. He, he he has delivered us from the wrath to come. Those are those who have not given their life to the Lord. Definitely what is awaiting is the wrath of the God. So the Thessalonians believers had only two business. So that is an example. It is written for us. They were they turned from idols to God. All idols. They have totally turned to God. No idols in their life. It is not the statue. It is not the it, it can be idols. Your love towards money is idols. Your love towards the children, 
it's it can be an idol everything can be an idol if you are if you are truly repented you will love lord and lord alone all other love it should flow through the lord then it is right love otherwise it's not right love so turning from idols to god and and to wait for his son so what is our life how we turn from idols to god and are we waiting for his return he will come back whether we desire or not he will come back within 50 years 60 years i'm not talking about his second coming in our life he will come within 50 years i'm counting my age i am telling some of you may meet him after 70 years or 80 years but less than 100 years of time all of us including the small children have to face the lord and to face the judgment his judgment is impartial many times i became sad about his impartial nature i used to think see if, if i am doing something wrong he will forgive no his judgment is impartial many times the lord's character saddened my heart even when i used i used to think i am committed doing service to the lord but even small mistake i am doing he is many times so painful just like the words of paul they paul at one stage is telling he wanted to die he find it better to die than to live so his impartial judgment we are to face so let us come together to love one another one another we should be ambassadors of jesus christ not satan you should not be an accuser of the brethren doing the ministry of satan then doing good works and encourage encourage let us spend time to praise